In 1999, at the Geneva Motor Show, Ferrari unveiled the replacement for the much-loved and much-heralded 355, a car that was to be one of the most significant in its history, the 360 Modena. Designed by the now legendary Pininfarina, inspiration for the 360 came from the classic Ferraris of old, like the 269 and Dino. Somehow the beautiful, curvaceous body manages to disguise the car's huge dimensions. But the car isn't just about style, because along with the use of aluminium throughout, it features radical new technology that would make the 360 one of the most advanced of all time. Now the task of creating a brand new sports car is of course a huge one. Gone are the days when you can lump a huge engine in a car and make it go fast in a straight line. No, these days it has to corner like it's on rails, which is where these come into play. Without getting too technical, because I'll get confused, these two huge rear air intakes channel air through to the diffusers and down to the ground, creating downforce. Not very noticeable at low speed, but the greater the speed, the greater the downforce. Now, according to Ferrari, at somewhere near top speed, 180 miles per hour, that will be creating about 180 kilograms of downforce. Let's see how much we create at 38 miles per hour. Now for me this 360 is an everyday car. It used to be a criticism of certainly the 355 when it was competing with the 911 that you needed to warm it up, you needed to warm it down, the gearbox needed warming up etc. This 360 no problem, you can just get in and go. The brakes are well just amazing. On the rear fat wheels you've got twin calipers and it stops the car in no time at all but I guess that's what you need in a car that does 180 miles per hour. Cornering, well, it's the complete experience. Now, no one is saying that this Ferrari is the best or even the most beautiful ever, although it is obviously rather nice. But it does represent Ferrari's ability to constantly push the technological barriers forward and create a sports car experience that very few car manufacturers, if any, can match. So, if you've been tempted and you've got pots of cash sitting around and you think you might like one of these, here's Ian Royal with a few tips. Now, in the past, Ferrari have been accused of having reliability issues. It used to go that if you use them too much, they tended to break. But the reverse is also true. By leaving the car locked away in a garage, everything from the hydraulics to the gaskets can deteriorate and perish, leaving you with a nasty repair bill. The best Ferraris to buy are ones that have received moderate use and have been regularly serviced. If you are unlucky and your prancing horse becomes lame at the side of the road, here's what it will take to get you moving again. A new clutch kit will set you back in the region of £486, while a water pump will cost you £130. If by some strange twist of fate you find yourself without an ashtray, a replacement will cost you a cool £140.